Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Choose your favorite 1980 song and get ready for a training montage, because that's exactly what's going to be going down in the latest batch of episodes from Boruto, Naruto, Next Generations. And things are really starting to heat up, especially in the latest episode of the series, as we're about to get to the next major confrontation of the series. But before we get to that, I do want to talk about the previous episode, which I didn't have a chance to review last week, as I was very busy and I was out of town. But I had a chance to sit down and watch both of these episodes today, and they certainly have a lot in common, as it's more about the relationship that's building between Boruto and Kawaki and the other characters as they prepare to train for the next portion of the series. A lot of this training comes in the form of the use of karma and trying to learn a little bit more about the mystery behind it, how it truly works, what its true purpose really is. And Kawaki really is the most proficient at using it, and that makes perfect sense as that's basically been what his entire life has been all about, as being this secret weapon which has been created by the Kara organization in order to use the power of the karma, in order to be their mysterious vessel. And so far we've seen a lot of what it's truly capable of with him, basically just enhancing his speed, his strength, as well as optimizing and strengthening all of his core abilities. And the fact that he's basically a living scientific ninja tool is what really gives him the edge in all of this. But Boruto still has a lot to learn in terms of actually using the karma. And in the first episode here, he does a big training session with Big Daddy Naruto, which is honestly a really cool action scene. It again establishes that Naruto is still one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful characters in the entire series series, as even when Boruto decides to use the power of karma, which again, basically just amplifies all of his power, Naruto just ends up beating the crap out of him. It's not just strength, it's how you use it. Being super powerful and everything really isn't the end-all be-all in the Naruto world anyway. If you can come up with a really good strategy to take down your opponent, there's a good chance that you will win. That's always been one of my favorite things about Naruto. There is power scaling in a sense, like there are those characters who are just inherently going to be way more powerful than the others, but again, if these characters can come up with some sort of strategy, they might have a chance. The only other really big surprises going on in this episode is the fact that we do have kind of like a meeting between Team 7 and Kawaki since their very first encounter, with Mitsuki meeting him for the very first time, as well as Sarada, who's also been inspired by Baruto and his training with his father, that she decides to ask Sasuke to learn how to use the Chidori ability, which which is, of course, Sasuke's signature technique, which I think is going to be really awesome. Whether Sarada is outright just copies the ability or comes up with something new, like a variant of it, remains to be seen. But again, I like these moments. I love these little smaller moments, especially with the very seldom seen Sasuke, Sakura, and Sarada. It's always the Boruto show for the most part, but it's always interesting to see Sasuke in that family dynamic, especially with Sakura, because... We just never really see that stuff all that often, and it's kind of refreshing. It's crazy. I'm an action junkie. I look forward to all the wacky-ass, ridiculous action scenes which make no sort of sense, but moments like this, they warm my heart. Even Kawaki is starting to warm up to the fact that he's living with Naruto and his family, and he gets a lot of important lessons, not just from the training sessions, but also from Naruto himself, which I think is actually kind of awesome. He is actually starting to soften up just a little bit. He's still the ultimate edgelord, but you can see that there's a lot of humanity in this character, which is slowly getting drawn out. While all this is going on, Kashin Koji has infiltrated Konoha Village, and he's utilizing the power of his toads to sort of spy on everybody and to find out where Kawaki is, and he does end up finding him, and I really love the way that this ability works. I don't know if Jiraiya ever used it like this, where he had these spy toads, where he basically is able to connect directly with them, but it's really cool, because the toads have those very distinctive pupils, and whenever Kashin Koji is using this, he has, like, the same exact pupils. Basically, he's seeing what the toads are seeing, and I just think that's really freaking cool. The latest episode is essentially more of the same, except that this time we actually get to see Baruto and Kawaki fighting against one another. And again, there's some pretty solid stuff here. Some really cool fighting choreography, and just the fact that they're both utilizing karma against one another is really cool. It's also really great because we get to see more of Kawaki's uh, weird scientific ninja body, where like he's able to grow his arms into giant monstrous-like forms, which are very Jugo-like, but they have a completely different look to them in terms of the color and the fact that they can transform in a number of different ways. But Baruto actually ends 
ends up giving him a pretty solid fight, and it leads to some really great moments in terms of the choreography, especially the one moment where Boruto ends up hitting Kawaki's arm with a Rasengan, which is really explosive and really cool. And basically, the battle just sort of ends here, and again, just showing that Kawaki is starting to warm up a little bit, he decides to do the unison sign with Boruto, where they put the two fingers together. However, this creates this like weird resonance moment between the two karma, and suddenly, Boruto gets a vision of Momoshiki. In his head, he just sort of pops up looking creepy and pompous as always, and basically this is just to let us know that that freaking pale bastard is only going to be making his way back into the series at some point. I love that they took this character, who originated as a movie villain, and they're slowly but surely transforming him into one of the next major antagonists of the series. Again, this is just more clues as to what the karma actually is, and manga readers are definitely going to know what's going on here, but for those who only watch the anime, I can only imagine what you're feeling just to see Momoshiki return in the form of a freaky vision in Nar uh, Boruto's mind. And, and Kawaki doesn't see any of this. That's what was interesting, because he could feel that something was wrong in that moment, as there was actually a little bit of pain, but Boruto was the only one who could actually see Momoshiki in his mind. So it's pretty freaky deaky stuff. So Kashin Koji is still being very cautious in terms of what he's trying to do, but Delta... She's straight up getting pissed. She wants some action. She wants to figure out where Kawaki is and immediately get him back to Kara. And so she decides to use this weird drone which comes out of her back, this weird triangular robotic looking thing which flies around Konoha Village. And luckily it doesn't use chakra, so it can't actually be sensed. But eventually she is able to use this ability to find Kawaki, Boruto, and all of his friends while they're training out in the middle of the woods. And she immediately goes on the chase, stupidly Iron Manning her way through Konoha Village, which sets off all sorts of alarms. Ino immediately notices. She starts to communicate with Naruto, letting him know that shit about to go down. Kashin Koji notices that Delta has officially lost her robotic shit, and that's where she decides to make this really great landing right in front of everyone as a big battle is about to take place. You look at the preview for the next episode. It's Delta versus Naruto. Naruto versus Delta. It's going to be so exciting. I'm so excited to see what they're going to do with this next coming episodes because there is some really solid action which is about to go off and there are some small snippets of that in the preview i really hope that they're going to do this fight justice because naruto versus delta is a really cool fight trust me you're gonna want to get excited for this one so What's the rundown on both of these episodes of Boruto? Very similar episodes in many senses, but I think they're really complementary of one another, of getting to see uh, Boruto continuing to learn a little bit more about karma, its true abilities. It's really when we get to the fight with Kawaki that things start to get interesting, when you get to learn about the importance of the resonance between these two characters, not just in utilizing these abilities, but getting some more secrets as to what the karma truly is. And a lot of that is shown in that first clue where we get that shot of Momoshiki, just really cool callback to his villain, and again, you just, just pay attention, it's gonna get crazy. Delta, her fight with Naruto is what I'm most excited about coming up next, because, I mean, one, it's a Naruto fight. Those don't happen that much in the Boruto series, and you gotta remember, this is the main character from the original series, and we wanna see him have a really awesome fight, because arguably he has some of the best of the entire series, and now we're getting to see him in his adult prime, going up against an inner member of Kara, a super-powered robotic inner member, of Kara, which I think is going to be great, and I can't wait to see Delta in action. Her character design in this episode made me realize something, though, and this might seem kind of like a weird thing. Does anybody else think that Delta looks like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character? Maybe it's the ridiculous hair color, the look of the eyes, the lipstick, just the fact that she's this weird, super oddly feminine type of character. I, I don't know. It's not to say there haven't been ones like that in the series before, but I don't know why, but there's a lot of close-up shots of her in this episode, and it just makes her look like someone out of JoJo's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't know what it is. I really think it's the color scheme and just the overall design of her face and everything. It just, it's really awesome. And again, it's, it's different. That's my favorite thing about Kara is how different they are from the previous villains. The only thing they really have in common with Akatsuki is the fact that they're a secret organization and some of them wear cloaks, but they're completely different. Otherwise, once those cloaks are gone, they have completely unique designs to them, and I just can't wait to see more of that in action. There's also a few smaller scenes, too, of Amato back at Kara headquarters as he's trying to figure out who the traitor is while Jigen is recuperating. Um, they don't really want to get into that all that much. Code is basically just sort of bugging him during all of these moments as they're basically trying to figure out who the traitor is. To me, while it is always interesting to get extra scenes with Kara, this one went on just a little too long, and it's just kind of boring, to be perfectly honest. It was the only part of the episode that made me go... 
Can we just get to the next training session here? I don't know. Seeing the same camera angles every two seconds for like the next five minutes was just kind of boring in my opinion. Uh, again, I don't usually bring this stuff up that much, but again, I'm reviewing the episode. Frankly, to me, it just felt like the type of material that didn't need to be expanded upon all that much. Uh, for people who read the manga, there might be things about this scene that you can appreciate, but for other people, they might just see it as kind of boring. But again, that's a nitpick on what is otherwise two doses of episodes, which I think are honestly pretty freaking solid across the board. There's a lot of really great surprises here, and ending it all with Delta landing in front of Naruto and all of his students is nothing short of spine tingling and really awesome. And again, I love Delta's design. I just can't talk about that enough. I really love the way that she was flying across Konoha Village with her legs and boots sort of opening up and transforming into these rockets. Uh, like I said, it reminded me of Iron Man, just the way that she was sort of flying around and everything. I just thought it looked really unique. The fact that she has like the drone that comes out of her back, it makes you realize that she's going to be a Swiss Army knight of robotic ridiculousness and I just can't wait to see more of her in action in her battle against Naruto. I'm pumped for that. But I really did like both of these episodes. I really didn't have any major complaints with them. I thought they were pretty solid material and if you're following the series, I think both of these episodes are mandatory viewing if you want to get a better appreciation of the overall story. Some of them aren't some of the moments aren't perfect, but for the most part it's all really entertaining. And uh, again, they're continuing to do a great job of humanizing the character of Kawaki and making him really interesting with the way that he's interacting with not only Boruto, but with Naruto and even with Himawari, especially the whole like trying to repair the vase thing. Uh, I don't know, something about that scene just feels way more powerful in the anime version than it did in the manga version, and I'm really digging it. So I'm gonna give both of these episodes a four out of five. I thought it was solid material, but I want to hear from you guys. Make sure to tell me in the comment section below what you thought about the latest episodes of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, all of the big training moments, Kawaki versus Boruto, and Delta arriving, getting ready to fight. How, what do you hope to see in her battle against Naruto? Sound off in the comment section below, and let's talk all about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. If you did like this video, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button. It's super easy to do. Help helps out these videos so much. I can't stress that. And it actually allows more people to actually see my content when I do release it to the public. It's really important, guys. I also want to take this time to thank all of my patrons. You guys are freaking awesome awesome. The super kages of Ace Guru. You're watching my videos, you're leaving me comments, but you're also going that extra mile and giving me monthly donations, and for that, I cannot thank you enough. Remember, first-time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choosing, as well as adding your name to this list of super amazing people that you currently see on screen, the super producers of Ace Guru. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay Damn, damn, baby.